What's up cousins, Anthony Jones here, and this is Brigade Boats, where I specialize in modifying John boats and aluminum rigs. In today's video, I'm gonna take a Tracker Grizzly 1754 and give it some major upgrades. I'm talking about a monster graph in the form of a Hummingbird Apex 13. We're gonna install some lithium batteries, a 36 volt Minn Kota trolling motor. We're gonna do a graph tower, some wiring, add some accessories, a lot of stuff guys from start to finish, step by step. I'm gonna show you in this video how I take a very clean, simple, basic, all welded aluminum John boat, turn it into a unique fishing machine ready to take on the electric only waters here in the state of Georgia. Stick around guys, without further ado, let's get into it. Guys, we are on the road to 50K, so if you wanna help us out, join the channel if you enjoyed the content, hit that subscribe button, I would greatly appreciate it. Hey guys, I bought my first pair of Waterland Fishing Optics about a year and a half ago, and I wore these things day in and day out and used and abused them. And so I can't even describe to you how excited it is for me to actually represent Waterland and work with Waterland here on the channel. I haven't been disappointed in my Waterlands yet, and you won't either. If you're looking for some premium polarized lenses designed with an angler in mind, check out Waterland. You can even save some bread by using the code BRIGADE at checkout for 15% off your entire order at waterlandco.com. Alrighty, guys, we got another one. This one is a Tracker Grizzly 1754, and we're going to be doing some up grades now this customer is on my full build wait list so i'm going to be getting this boat back at a later date to do a full build out on it and it has the potential to be one of the baddest ones i've done yet but for now she wanted to go ahead and drop off the boat get a new trolling motor graph graph mount batteries onboard chargers all the goodies to hold her over until we can get this boat back in here and do a full build and yes you heard that right i did say she because this boat is owned by a female angler so all you georgia boys you better watch out because she is bringing the heat with some major upgrades and eventually i'm going to get my hands on this boat for a build out before i pull this boat around in the shop in the shade to do the work let's go take a look at the parts i'm going to add all right first up Minn Kota ultrax 36 volts going to go on the front we got a lot of goodies in here. We're going with all lithiums. This boat is all electric, used here in the state of Georgia for electric only lakes and reservoirs. So all lithiums gonna save some weight. These are tracker lithiums, 100 amp hours. Three of these are going on the 36 volt Ultrax. One of these is going on the graph and one of them is going on the hand tilled Minn Kota 55 that's on the back of the boat. And to charge all those beautiful batteries, we've got two Minn Kota onboard chargers. Both of them are 15 amps of bank, that one's two bank, that one's four bank. This one's gonna go in the back of the boat, four batteries in the back of the boat. This one's gonna go up front to charge the one battery that's going up front for the graph. Speaking of which, look at this bad boy, cousins. Apex 13 Hummingbird. I'm not gonna tell you what this thing costs. If you guys wanna know, just Google it. This is gonna be the most expensive, nicest graph I have ever installed. Can't wait to take it out of the box and even check it out. And to mount that graph, we're gonna be using Tiny Boat Nation Outdoors graph tower look at that thing man nate really came through on this bad to the bone and what's cool about this product is you've got options you could add accessories so on one side we're running a plier holder and on the other side we're going to run a cup holder and they just bolt on you can swap accessories or you could just go uh plain and simple without the accessories and it still looks cool so this thing is going to look really nice with that graph on top for those Group 31 batteries, I've got these battery trays by Sea Choice. Got these on Amazon. So I got five of these to mount within the boat. Should keep the batteries safe and secure. 
We got a 60 amp circuit breaker for the Ultrex, and then I've got a lot of terminal connectors because we're gonna be doing a lot of wiring um, on all these batteries. And this is pretty cool. This is from Precision Sonar. This is a Mega 360 transducer mount that mounts on the trolling motor shaft. As you can see, it enables it to spin. Uh, pretty cool. Never seen one of these before. We're going to mount this up. Although we do not have the Mega 360 transducer yet. She ordered it. Just not here. Don't know if I'm going to even install it on this portion of the project because you know how things are nowadays. Everything's on back order. And then we've also got a TH Marine trolling motor stabilizer going on the trolling motor. Well guys, I got this thing inside and I guess I got so excited to start that I forgot to show you what was back here. So about halfway through removing this stuff, let's kind of talk about the original setup. As you can see, there was an Optima blue top, Optima blue top. Those two blue tops are ran together to run the motor guide up front, 24 volt. That other battery over there, the 12 volt was over here and that just ran this uh, Minn Kota that I pulled off the back, 55, 12 volt. Beyond that, just a lot of wires going everywhere. I'm gonna clean things up to the best of my abilities. Long term, we're gonna be redoing a lot of this electrical on the accessory end of things. Right now, everything just has inline fuses. But long term, when we do the build out of this boat, I'm gonna do a fuse box, a nice switch panel like I do in all my builds and just tidy this up. But right now, we're mainly focused on the upgrades and then making what's already in the boat electronically work with the new setup. I also go ahead and take this anchor off. She no longer wants it, but beyond that, I'm gonna take out the rest of this stuff and we'll start mocking up the new setup. Alrighty, all cleaned up. I'm going to go through some of this wire, clipping the zip ties, kind of get it organized and start putting the batteries and the trays in to kind of see what I need to do as far as layout. And quick note, guys, as I go through this wiring, I'm checking everything. And if I feel like something needs to be cut and redone, I'll just do it. But I'm checking for stuff like this, where that obviously is, is split. So I'm just going to check everything um, anywhere like this. You know, any of these that need to be redone, we're just going to cut them and redo them. And I'll hook everything up the right way. I may just go ahead and re replace all these terminal connectors because um, even that one doesn't look the greatest. So probably just go ahead and do that. All right, got everything mocked up, how it's gonna go in for install. It's gonna be tight fit, guys. Two batteries, two batteries, and then that onboard charger is gonna be snug right between all that action. I'm gonna do one other thing. Customer had this bilge pump basically kind of just rattling around. It looks like it was glued at some point, but it didn't hold. So I'm gonna clean that up and glue it and uh, put some weight on it and let it sit overnight. All right, got that grinded to bare aluminum. Use the old Milwaukee, awesome tool. Cleaned it with some alcohol. Gonna take some of this Gorilla construction adhesive, extra strength, squirt it on the bottom and glue it up. Mo better. And as you can see, the bilge pump is still removable from this tray that is glued down and not going anywhere shaking the whole boat so we're good to go on that want to show you another trick before i install these lithium batteries so these are group 31s the problem with any kind of battery you buy for a boat is when you order battery trays there's not always going to be perfect fitment let me show you what i mean see there's a gap there's a gap here and this battery does have some play not the end of the world, but if I spent the money I did on these kind of batteries, I want them to be super tight. So we're gonna make them jam up jelly tight. What I do is I take some hydro turf scraps and I just fill in each side, depending on how much I need. And for this, filling in one side and the other gives you a perfect fit. This battery is not going anywhere. Then I can run my strap over the top, tight and secure. Now, another thing I'm doing is I'm drilling some holes just for water drainage. Um, these don't have holes in them, so they can hold water, I guess, in theory, if water gets back here um, on a rainy day. So I'm going to drill some holes. Beyond that, I'm going to get everything kind of mocked up and installed. Batteries are in. Everything's super tight. Used uh, stainless self-tappers holding those trays down. Went ahead and installed 
60 amp circuit breaker that's going to be for the 36 volt troll motor need to do the wiring on the batteries to to do the 36 volt the 12 volt i believe it's going to be this one's going to run the uh, troll motor on the back and a few of the accessories she's got the bilge and uh, nav lights now originally i was going to just hook everything back up with inline fuses as it was but i've just decided to do a small fuse box back here probably going to put it down here somewhere uh just tidy things up a bit so I just ordered that fuse box. It's going to be here in two days. So between now and then, I'm going to try to get all the rest of the stuff done in the boat and then hook up that fuse box dead last. For now, I'm going to move on to doing all the terminal connections for 36 volt. Thirty-six volt hooked up. Got your positive coming off. This is six gauge going into the battery side of the 60 amp circuit breaker off the auxiliary side. You've got your six gauge feed going up front to the trolling motor. You got off your negative, jumped over to your positive, negative to positive, negative up front to the trolling motor. The negative and positive were the original ones that were in the boat from Bass Pro Shop. Did not feel a need to replace those leads. And again, this battery is gonna be running the 12 volt, 55 pound thrust Minn Kota on the back and then the accessory fuse box that we've decided to add. And with that mocked up and out of the way, I'm gonna go ahead and install the onboard charger and get that hooked up. Battery tray's in, battery's in, onboard charger mounted, circuit breaker, 36 volt all wired up, waiting on the 12 volt fuse box, actually, Added this little bracket for the plug, bilge pump, 100%, moving up front. I need to take off this ancient thing and then take off the trolling motor. Working through the front end, removing some of this stuff, we're gonna eliminate this 12 volt factory cigarette plug style outlet and uh, take that wiring and put us a USB port, I think over here, long-term, another add-on, got the graph off, and uh, about to pull the trolling motor. Just wanted to mention, Johnny Ray from Gatson, Alabama, he's a good guy. Trolling motor is off. There she is. This thing is a beast. 112. Well, time to go ahead and get this thing bolted up. It was a fight, but I got it all bolted up and I've got the lift assist on as well. Super easy piece of tube goes through. This is a spacer, spacer, screw, screw, thread lock, tighten them from both sides at the same time. And yes, I went the slowest way possible with this and the old pliers because they give you three inch long bolts and I've seized up those nylon lock nuts using a drill or trying to put impact on it. And honestly, I don't have a socket that'll get over those to tighten them all the way down. So I just want the old school primitive method. Trolling motor on, prop on, time to get it some power. Took this by Marinko. This is a uh, plug. And this was on the old trolling motor. We're going to leave that in place. So we're going to put this on the new power. Alrighty, with that on, next we're going to install one of these. This is called a Troll Tamer by TH Marine. And essentially what this does is this mounts into the deck and then this mounts onto the trolling motor. And when you flip it over, it actually locks it in place and you have the ability to lock that in. I do not think we're going to use the factory bracket that came with the Minn Kota. That factory support bolts right here and it goes down and it's adjustable. What this mechanism does is we're going to drill a hole on the underside of this and it's basically going to bolt on. And then it's going to peg into the deck and lock into place. All 
All right, that is installed. Put your foot on it, kick it forward. You can pull your motor up. That's just gonna be right there. And then when you pull your trolling motor back in, that's just going to go down, lock in. So this is gonna keep it locked into place at all times. There's not gonna be any vibration. It's not gonna go anywhere, heavy duty. I like it. It's a little tough to get your kind of foot under there, a little awkward, but when this boat gets built, it'll be a lot better because there's going to be more deck. Fuse box came in. It's a small one with a negative terminal. We don't need a lot because, again, there's not a lot of accessories in this boat. Now, I did realize when I installed the Ultrex, it's got this puck for iPilot. That needs power, so we're going to put it on this flat surface back here, wire the power around. Thinking we're going to do the fuse box kind of down in here in this corner, out of the way a little bit, wire everything up. Got the fuse box installed. You can see positive coming off positive terminal, negative to negative. Got a few accessories wired in and fused already. Got to the bilge pump and upon checking whoever previously wired it, there were some issues. So I cut all the wires and pulled everything down and loose and just rewired it. So we've got new connectors. This was actually in there, like so, and uh, wired up, working good. Everything's uh, mo better. Just one of them deals, man. You, you get into some of this wiring, and it's like, where do you draw the line? But I want to make sure this one is good to go and doesn't give my customer any issues. I'm back up front doing some wiring. Cut all the leads coming into that cigarette-style plug. Cut the leads going into the nav light. They had a cluster of stuff kind of jumped together in there. Didn't really like how it was done. So I cut everything, just going to rewire it. Goodness gracious, guys. Might as well address it while we're here. So I'm going to add a USB port up here. Let me show you that. Here it is, USB port, voltmeter. So this will give you voltage on the accessory battery. And it's got an on-off switch. Pretty cool little unit. Was going to drill a hole and mount it in here. Decided not to. Kind of want to mount it under here somewhere. Of course, need a bracket. Made a bracket, aluminum, drilled a hole through it, notched it for the rivets underneath, wrapped it in some matte black vinyl. Going to stick it up in there, and that way this thing will be kind of out of the way up under there. And if you want to charge phones, I think a great thing is to plug your plug in and slide your phone under here. That way it's not baking in the sun. Going to go ahead and install some of this stuff. Oh, and I almost forgot while I was dealing with this and sorting that scenario out, I, I ended up having to take all the wiring loose from underneath the gunnel and break it all apart. So I'll need to mount that back up. It is what it is, guys. Got to run a new negative lead in. But I'm going to get after it and I'm going to show it to you here when I get it all tidied up. Quick tip for you. I'm hanging this wiring back up underneath the gunnel the way it came in. Actually trying to get a little bit tighter. But I wanted to share with you guys, if you don't have one of these for your impact, I would suggest getting one. I believe this is made by Ryobi, and it was only 10 or 15 bucks. But for hard to reach places where you can't get a drill, you could get up under, and uh, that'll break it loose. I use this thing all the time. Another thing on any of the wiring I'm replacing in this boat, using heat shrink crimp connectors. Got my crimp tool. Shrink these after crimping, and then if necessary, you could go back over it with some heat shrink wrap. Wiring all back in, hidden underneath the gunnels, all the way throughout the boat. And I'm about to stick this back in, just want to show you guys, negative, positive coming in. And that's fused in the back of the boat, which I'll get to in a minute. And I, I like these because the switch is built in, so it's not drawing power. Turn it on, reads volts, and the volts are actually visible through the cover, and you could charge two devices. Turn it off, no power. I'm gonna mount this up. And in the back of the boat, I have been a busy guy. I've got all of this wiring Super cleaned up, redid the switch, labeled, and then cleaned all this up and organized it as best as I could, working with what was already there. You can see there's the fuse box. It's got the cover. If you pop one, 
Let me see if I can get this out. See, it illuminates. See how that's lit up red? And you can see it just went back out. So that's what I like about those. In case you can't figure out that your stuff isn't working, it's got a dummy light on it for you. All four batteries in, battery trays, all of the wiring, fuse box, onboard charger in the back, wiring back up down the gunnels, trolling motor installed, trolling motor stabilizer. The only thing that's left to do is go ahead and put together the graph mount, break out the graph, get it mounted up, adjust the pedal, mount it into the floor, and then mount the battery underneath with a custom tray. First order of business up here is figuring out how I'm going to mount this battery. As you can see, this is the bottom of the boat. It goes uphill. It goes uphill in the front. It goes uphill on both sides. And I want to get that battery back in there. So what I think I'm going to do is figure out a way to um, come across with some sort of piece of tube that bolts in or rivets into the side on both sides. And then it's going to be flat. And it's going to somehow rivet into the back too. And then I can put my battery tray on there. But I'm not... I mean, let me show you guys this, if I can get this battery in. There's not a lot of space up in here. And again, there's really no way to, as you can see, that's not going to work. We need, we need this to be flat and it needs to be secure. So we've got to build some sort of platform in here and uh, get it tied down. This is how it's currently going. Got the tray pretty much how I want it, guys. Let's see. It's floating, so it's off the hole. All right, so plenty of airspace, which I like. It's going to tie in on that side, tie in on that side. Now, kind of why I've got in in here a mock up is I got to figure out. I was hoping I was going to be able to put a piece of angled aluminum across the back and just hit each of these supports they got welded in. But as you can see, the boys at Tracker did me no favors as both of those pieces are welded in at completely different angles. Um, and not to dog my customer's boat, but guys, take a look-see at those welds. That's uh, not very pretty. They must put the cousins that are on weld training inside the compartments and then the cousins that are the finished welders doing all the stuff you can see. That's really the only thing I can make of that. And there she is, guys. That's kind of what I came up with. I think it's going to work well. I like it. Uh, don't mind the crooked brackets in the back. Those are mounted perfectly square to the crooked supports welded in the boat. I'm going to go ahead and get this thing mounted up, and then we'll be ready to get the battery in and get the graph on. And my bad, I didn't even tell you what this is. This is a one by one tube aluminum. These are just one by one angled inch and a half by inch and a half angled 090 sheet aluminum on the bottom i riveted the back of the tray in and screwed the front end just on the corners notice no protruding screws to the bottom therefore it won't penetrate the hole thinking in advance guys so we don't sink her she's in and that is a tight fit goodness gracious Got her in there, man. It's like a puzzle. You got to flip the battery down, slide it in, flip it up, and go straight up and in with it. Only thing that deviated from my original plan was I actually had to bump this thing down as low as I can get it. As you can see, my original mark was uh, about a half an inch higher on both sides, and I just did not have the clearance to get this battery in. Really, it was this seat pedestal base that comes below the framing. Couldn't get it up and in. By dropping it down, slid right in, fits like a glove. I am going to pull the battery out and test it the onboard charger and get the graph kind of rough wired in to test everything with it before I final mount it. Apex 13 Hummingbird. Look at this beast. Did you just look at it? Sometimes you just got to look at it. I want to show you something. This thing's huge. When your graph is bigger than your battery. When your graph is bigger than your trolling motor foot pedal. I mean, this thing's huge. This is this is just flat out ridiculous. By far the largest graph I've ever put in a boat. I know the pros run these things all day long, but I mean, in little old John Boat world that I work in, this thing is pretty extreme. 
So I'm going to hook the graph up and I get the power cord out. And uh, so I go to look at the install instructions and I don't really understand this. Install inline fuse holder not included. Thanks, Hummingbird. Literally the most expensive graph I've ever installed. One of the most expensive graphs on the market. No inline fuse. And if you look up here, Apex 13 is a 5 amp, but these are slow blow or MDL equivalent. Typically on the Hummingbirds I've done in the past and even the Garmin's, there's going to be a fuse on the power side, on the hot side, that looks just like this. It's just a little housing and it's an inline fuse. And inside of that is one of these special glass fuses. They're slow blow fuses. And what that means is, if it's a 5 amp, it'll allow more than 5 amps through for a quick surge, particularly on a graph this size for like a startup. When you initially turn it on, it may pull more than 5 amps. If they wanted you to use a bladed fuse, they would have said that. They say slow blow, so I had to scour the internet. And these things are hard to come by right now in today's economy, so maybe that's why Hummingbird doesn't include them anymore. I do not know. Got her fired up. Going to play with it here in a minute, but power is on. Let me show you what I did. Uh, the, the leads from the factory from Hummingbird were only so long coming out, so I just extended those because I already had to add the inline fuse. As you can see, I added terminal connectors, heat shrink wrap, inline fuse, heat shrink crimp connector, extending my lead with the same gauge wire. Same deal here, and just lengthen the leads, got them hooked up. I'm going to play with this thing, man. I went ahead and test fit my seat and figured out exactly where I want the pedal to go. And then I measured out, made a line. So the pedal is going to go right in this area. Tower is going to go up here. Power cable is going to feed through. And I'm going to route it actually under the pedal. This pedal has spacers on the corners to keep it raised. So power cord can go under and then we can feed it through. There is a wall. If you remember that battery is under here, there's a front wall and it's like right here. So I've got a hole here, and then what I've done is actually got a hole, as you can see up there at the top in the back, and you can see my other hole shining light through, and then the power is going to come out, I'll hook it up to the battery. So it's a nice way to kind of hide the power wire and protect it, and then not have like a big hole in the deck. All that's poor foam, all this is poor foam, all this is poor foam. So we're just working with what we got, I think this is going to work out great. As far as these holes, I'm just using a hole saw and then I'm taking my rotary tool by Milwaukee. I'm just sanding the corners so there's not a sharp edge. And then I take this and I go in on the inside of the carpet to kind of remove some of that carpet. That way I could put some edging on to protect that wire. I know I'm bouncing all over the place, but I figured this was worth mentioning. Hooked up the battery charger in the back. Everything looks good on these four lithiums in the back. And I wanted to show you, because I didn't mention it when I did the install in the back, but I'm getting this mocked up for up front. These things are really cool. The Minn Kotas have different settings. So you could do AGM, flooded, or lithium. You just hold this button down on the battery selection and select the proper battery that you're going to be charging. All right, got the battery mounted up. Onboard charger in place. She's still got some room for a little bit of storage in here. Battery is elevated. It is a tight fit, not gonna lie. Um, leads are hooked up and you can't really see it, but that wire's coming through that hole in the back, feeding down from the graph. And she's got an extra bank if for some reason there's another battery that ends up going in here. But uh, I like it, I love it. I want some more of it. Foot pedal is already screwed in place. We're getting there. Got the mounting bracket from the Apex 13 mounted to TB Nation Outdoors. Custom graph tower. And this is just stainless hardware. So these come with no holes drilled. They do have a slot for your wiring to feed through. So you just need to drill holes for your brackets. No issue there. Stainless hardware. Another thing. I forgot to mention, you probably saw it in some previous clips. I had the puck for the Minn Kota, for the jog feature, uh, for the iPilot. I had it over there, but I didn't really think when I mounted it that I had the battery cables feeding through for the trolling motor. And I don't want there to be any interference 
no problem. I just moved it to this side, still has a clear line of sight. Wiring goes around, goes down and around into the fuse box. There she is. Foot pedal, trolling motor, Apex 13, graph mount, got all the wires nice and neat, out of the way. This thing is awesome, man. This, this picture is unbelievable. We're pretty much wrapped up. I've got one more thing I got to do in the back. I got to hook the uh, 55 pound thrust trolling motor to the circuit breaker on the battery, put that on and then pull it out. Got the Minn Kota hand control trolling motor mounted back up on the transom. Very simple, negative to negative. Positive, what I did was add a new uh, terminal connector on the end with some heat shrink and then I recycled this 50 amp circuit breaker that was on the original trolling motor that was on this boat. So they were not running a circuit breaker on this, but I figured why not? We already had this part and this is what I needed. So we're gonna go ahead and put this on this battery. Again, this was the standalone 12 volt back here. This one and those two are for the 36 volt up front. Beyond that, we're done. Almost forgot the precision sonar bracket is installed on the shaft. And this is going to be for the Mega 360. Unfortunately, we did not get the Mega 360 transducer in time for me to do the install. It was on back order and the customer installed that transducer at a later date after pickup. call this one done and send her down the road i hope you guys enjoyed this step by step this is kind of a last minute deal to do this video while i had this boat in here but i figured i would because it's got some really nice parts and some unique things going on with all the batteries the wiring the onboard chargers of course one of my favorite things is this hideaway battery and charger under the deck and i mean come on look at the size of that graph dude quick note this thing was so big we could not fit the cup holder or the tool accessories on the side. So we had to discard those for now, but not to worry because my buddy Nate said, when we get this thing back in here for a full bill, we're gonna do a custom tower for it to accommodate this monster of a unit. And then of course the Ultrex thing is super nice. And that is it guys. With that said, I am out of here. Thank you for watching. Hope you took something away from this video and we are gonna catch you on the next one.